Hi, welcome to the Ghost Tea Virtual NASA Social. I'm Allison Tankersley here at Kennedy Space Center where we just had the Atlas V ULA rocket roll out to the pad. Joining me is Dan Lindsay. Dan, you are the program scientist with NOAA. What is your job? So How my job is that. Yeah. <laughs> my job as the program scientist is to uh, after the rocket reaches its orbit and begins sending back data it's to figure out how to use that data in order to do the job that NOAA has. So for example, we get data from the Advanced Baseline Imager, the Geostationary Lightning Mapper. Um, then what happens next? How do we take that data and give it to our colleagues at the National Weather Service and other private forecasting companies? And uh, how do they use that to better warnings, better forecast? So I sort of lead the coordination of, of uh, some of that science. That's awesome. So I know there is definitely a lot of data with this rocket. What does that data show us specifically? from GOES? So uh, some examples of some really cool things that you can see from GOES. Uh, first of all, once after we launch and go into uh, geostationary orbit, after a couple months we'll move over to the GOES west position, which is over the East Pacific Ocean. That gives us a really good view of the western United States. So we see things uh, you know, that, are, that happen in California. And one example is wildfires. We've all heard about many, many wildfires over the last couple of years especially. And the advanced baseline imager has uh, the capability of detecting the hot spots from those wildfires. So sometimes we're even able to see the hot spots from satellite before the fires get reported by the public. And this is important because then we can alert the emergency managers who can then go out and sometimes they can put out the fires ahead of time. So that's something that we really didn't anticipate as being you know, so helpful ahead of time since it's not really a weather capability itself. That's definitely amazing and see how it'd be helpful. Is there any other data you would say have been a surprising product like this one? Sure, yeah, something else we didn't expect is, uh, so the geostationary lightning mapper is another instrument. Of course, it detects lightning. It's the first time we've been able to uh, see lightning uh, constantly over the, the entire hemisphere, really. Um, and so one thing we've noticed is sometimes when meteors come into the, in, into the Earth's atmosphere, they produce lots of light. So it sort of tricks the instrument and the instrument thinks that it's lightning. And so, uh, for example, um, the weather service up in Pittsburgh just a couple of months ago, they had people calling in and saying, we saw a really bright flash and heard a boom. What could that be? And so what they did was take a look at the geostationary lightning mapper data and they saw a signal and they said, oh, that is a meteor. And so then they were able to explain to the public, you know, what, what was the flash and, uh, and what was the boom. Well, that is definitely a surprising product. And you used a word right there a lot, geostationary. Can you tell us what does that mean? Sure. So geostationary is a special orbit such that we're a little more than 22,000 miles above the equator. And the reason we're at that specific altitude is the Earth spins at the same rate that the, that the satellite orbits. And so you're able to always look at the same place at the same time as the Earth. And the reason this is important is you can take an image or take a picture every few minutes, say every 10 minutes or so, and it's sort of like time-lapse photography from space, is once you take those images and you put them together in a series, it makes a movie and you can see the clouds move. So for example, you can see a hurricane spinning, you can see the wildfires advancing, you can see thunderstorm clouds building. And that, that really is the unique capability and the critical uh, importance of having geostationary orbit. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Jan, for joining us. We're so excited for this launch. Next, and now I'm joined by Chrissy Hurley, a warning coordination meteorologist with NOAA in Nashville. Hi, Chrissy. Hello. And what do you do with the GOES data? Well, we do many different things. We monitor it for aviation weather, fire weather, severe weather. But the biggest thing is where the GOES-T satellite is going to be positioned. It's going to be across the Eastern Pacific Ocean, so it's going to have coverage across the western half of the United States, Alaska, Hawaii, Guam. And what's so important about that is weather moves west to east. So we need that data where we don't have much across the Pacific Ocean now. We don't have observing systems where we're getting to know what the temperature and whatnot across the ocean is or weather balloon launches on top of the water. So the GO satellite fills in those data gaps to really help improve forecast and model output. That's awesome. And can you tell me what is an atmospheric river and how does that help with the GOES forecast? Well, we monitor many different things in a National Weather Service operations forecast setting. And one of those is atmospheric rivers. So think about, you know, a river on the ground, on the surface, but up in the atmosphere. So it's taking moisture from one location to another. And, you know, atmospheric river is kind of the buzzword right now. We had one uh, this winter where Lake Tahoe got four feet of snow. That was the atmospheric river. So we're able to monitor the location of those atmospheric rivers, where that moisture is going to be, and 
then be able to tell where, you know, chances of higher flooding, you know, increased chances of higher snowfall will occur. Well, we definitely want to be prepared for that. And how does GOES data improve over time? Well, I've been in the National Weather Service almost 20 years now, and let me tell you, it has improved remarkably. When I first got in the Weather Service, we were getting images every 15, 30 minutes. You thought your internet is slow now. It was nothing compared to waiting for a satellite images. Now, in an operational setting, we're getting those same types of images and more every 30 to 60 seconds. And so that really does make a difference when we're in severe weather, winter weather, operations and able to get those warnings out sooner. I can believe it. That is quite the improvement. Mm -hmm. So we're also excited here for launch. Where will you be on launch day? I will be at uh, Banana Creek viewing area and I'm very excited. This is, you know, Ghost T satellite has been, I mean, all the ghost satellites have been life changing as far as meteorologists and forecasters. And so the first two in this series, the ghost satellites, I was at home watching them and I'm so excited to be here on site to see my first rocket launch. Well, we're very excited too. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go Ghost T.